the functions f and g are defined on the domain x an element of r less the points are the values minus 1 and 0 as follows f such that x maps onto inverse tan of minus x over x plus 1 and g such that x maps onto inverse tan of x plus 1 over x the first question we want to show that f prime of x is minus 1 over 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 so we can write this here is just f of x equals inverse tan of minus x over x plus 1. You can see that x cannot equal minus 1 because if it did, we would have 0 in this denominator. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. And uh, we can't have a 0 in a denominator. We can't divide by 0. So that's why x can be any real number except minus 1. It can't be 0 either because in the second function, if x was 0, we would have 0 in the denominator. So x can be any real number except minus 1 or 0 for these two functions. Now, in a previous video, or you can look this up, we proved that the inverse tan of u is, the derivative of inverse tan of u is 1 over u squared plus 1. So that was proven in a previous video, and uh, this result is also tabulated. So you can just look this up. Uh, the argument of inverse tan is probably called x, the derivative of inverse tan x with respect to x will be 1 over x squared plus 1. I'm just calling it u here to avoid confusion with this x up here. So we're going to have to use the chain rule here on this function because it's not inverse tan of u. It's a bit more complicated. So um, we start by pretending that this thing here is just u. So we plug this in for u in the derivative. So we have 1 over minus x over x plus 1 squared plus 1. So that's what we get um, if we pretend that this thing is u. So the derivative with respect to u, so this would be, be like dy du. Well, where y is equal. f of x is y, of course. And then we multiply by du dx. So we have to differentiate this with respect to x. Well, this would involve, this is a u is a quotient, so we have to use the quotient rule. So we have v, which is the denominator, x plus 1, multiplied by the derivative of the numerator, u, which is minus 1. By the way, when I say u, I don't mean um, the entire fraction here. When I call this u, I mean, it's called u for the quotient rule, so don't confuse the two. Um, for the quotient rule, the numerator is u. For the chain rule, all of this is normally referred to as u. So we get dy du and then we get du dx. Anyway, um, to differentiate minus x over x plus 1 with respect to x, we multiply v, the denominator, by the derivative of the numerator. Then we subtract the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of v with respect to x is 1. And we divide all of this by v squared. So that's just a quotient rule applied to the function minus x over x plus 1. So this is du dx. Again, where u is actually this thing here. Don't confuse it with the u and the quotient rule. So I just applied the quotient rule without writing down the formula. You can look it up and plug everything in. That should be fairly familiar. Now let's uh, do some simplifying. Now when we square out minus x over x plus 1, we square the minus x. Minus x times minus x is just plus x squared. And then we square the x plus 1 in the denominator. What about over here? Well, we have x plus 1 times minus 1 minus minus x by plus 1. We're going to get a minus x here when we multiply x by minus 1. And we're going to get a plus x here when we multiply plus x by 1. So the x's will go out. We will be left with plus 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1. Now, when we multiply these two fractions together, we get plus 1 by minus 1, which is minus 1 on top. And what about underneath? Well, we multiply x1 plus 1 squared by all of this here. x plus 1 squared by x squared over x plus 1 squared is just x squared. The x plus 1 squareds will cancel when we multiply x plus 1 squared by this fraction here. And then we multiply x1 plus 1 squared by plus 1. Well, that's just plus x plus 1 squared. And uh, if we open out this bracket here, we get an x squared, and we add it to this x squared to get a 2x squared. 
and then we have x times 1 doubled is plus 2x and then we square the plus 1 to get plus 1. So this is what we had to show. So we found f prime of x or if you like you can call it dy dx. dy dx is dy du times du dx. These cancel out. So that's the chain rule was used here for the inverse tan function. It can be shown that f prime of x equals g prime of x. Now we're not asked to show it. I mean we would have to differentiate this function here with respect to x and if we do that well we do it in a very similar way to getting the derivative of f of x we just use the chain rule we should get this answer so that should be straightforward if you know how to differentiate f with respect to x you can differentiate g with respect to x anyway we're given that they're equal one of the three diagrams a b or c below represents parts of the graphs of f and g based only on the derivatives state which diagram is the correct one and state also why each of the other two diagrams is incorrect well if the derivatives are the same it means that the slopes of tangents to both graphs at each value of x are the same so for example at x equals naught we should find that the slope of the tangent at x equals naught which is the derivative of f with respect to x at naught or f prime of naught is the slope of this line should equal the slope of this line here and it looks like they do because f of x is actually parallel to g of x which means that for any value of x the slopes of the tangents are the same and that's what we want we want the slopes of the tangents to be the same because the slopes of the tangents is the derivative of the function so the slope of this line here is g prime of x and uh, the slope of this line here is f prime of x and you can see they're both equal they're parallel to each other if we take tangents to both graphs at any value of x we'll see that the tangents are parallel to each other that's not the case in this diagram here you know if we take say this value of x here and look at the tangent the tangent looks like this but at the same value of x the tangent up here is quite different a different slope these f and g are not parallel curves if they're not parallel curves then the tangents or the derivatives are different for different va at, for each value of x for this value of x here you can see that the slopes of the tangents are different so the derivative of g with respect to x is not equal to the derivative of f with respect to x well, for this particular value of x anyway, actually you can see this is tr probably true for all values of x. So we can rule this diagram out straight away. You can see that diagram C is a possible answer as well because g of x is parallel to f of x. Two curves are parallel, it means that the derivatives f prime of x equals g prime of x for each value of x. So for example, if I pick this value of x here and get the derivative of f with respect to x in other words get the slope of this tangent here the slope of this tangent is the derivative of f with respect to x and if i get the slope of the tangent to g of x at x we get the same values because these two tangents are parallel to each other so the slope of this tangent is g prime of x so the slope at x and we see that these are equal okay so it could be diagram c but look let's consider the value at x equal naught now that's one value we can work out both derivatives at and let's look at it at x equal naught equal to naught here as well so let's look at the derivative of f respect to x at naught so we just have to plug naught into this so we get 2 times naught squared plus 2 times naught plus 1 well that's just minus 1 divided by plus 1 which is minus 1 so you can see that the derivative of f at naught is negative negative means that the tangent at x equals naught must have a slope of minus 1 and this is a line with a negative slope it's going in this direction so we only have to look at the sign 
the sine gives it away. If the sine is minus, then we have a, a line going in this direction, a tangent going in this direction. We have the same tangent here, by the way. These two are parallel. Um, so it must be diagram A, because in diagram C, well, the tangents have the same slope at x equals naught, of course. Uh, f prime is 0 equals g prime of 0. But you see they have positive slopes. So for this diagram, f prime of 0, which is the same as g prime of 0, is actually positive. See, the lines are going in this direction. The tangents are increasing for increasing x. If we pick any point on the tangent, increase x by 1, we have to go up to meet the line. Slopes are po positive slopes. So we see that diagram A is the correct diagram. A good tip in questions where you're given graphs and you have to decide based on derivatives is to look at zero because very often that's the only x value that you can use to determine what the derivative looks like. You you won't you might not know the exact value of the derivative, but you can see from the graph whether the slope is positive or negative at zero. Whereas you can't tell for any other for other value you, you don't know any other values of x, you only know zero.